to Cybernautica. Give it up for those guys. In a gritty dystopian future, scientists have developed a new performance enhancing nanotechnology. Originally created for the biomedical industry as a healing tool, over time the technology was reproduced and modified for less idealistic uses, courtesy of a black market group of biohackers. The nanobots are focused around cybernetic implant cores and utilize vibrations to produce sound waves, which are then emitted via outputs. This once pure technology was altered for sexual pleasure, deadly weapons, and a new drug trade. Now, a deadly corruption has begun to manifest in the bodies of users, a nanobot cancer. Researchers on medical station Alpha, a space station in orbit around the planet Ogam 7, are hard at work to find a cure. Lockin, the main antagonist, has developed the nanocancer. He and his beastly henchman, the Hexen, will stop at nothing to save him. They raid the space station seeking the cure, which they will then, of course, also market to the rest of the planet for a profit. Anyone in their path is brutally murdered, including head scientist in charge of the research, Surma. She and her husband, Vale, a former bounty hunter, live on the space station with their young daughter, Isla. Isla escapes the massacre with Cell. That's Cell. An androgynous cybernetic human built by Surma to house the cure to the nano cancer. Vale escapes as well and disappears into obscurity. Fifteen years later, on Ogam 7, Isla and Cell are hunted by Aachen and his Hexen. As the disease ravages his body, he becomes more desperate and less human. As Aachen becomes less human, Isla becomes more badass donning her father's armor and ultimately battling Aachen to the death. Vale, who has been hiding in the shadows all this time, steps in to aid her as Aachen explodes into a 20-foot cybernetic horror. Two identical armored figures, Isla and Vale, fight to bring the beast down together. In a final act of desperate rage, Aachen enters a self-destruct sequence, his massing in massive infected body erupting in, erupting in a gruesome explosion. Vale, now indistinguishable from Isla, sacrifices himself into the explosion to save Isla. There's a moment of confusion as the audience tries to determine which of our heroes has fallen until Isla triumphantly, but devastated, rips off her helmet, revealing her identity.
inspired by Bros and the talented people here within. We want everyone to have an opportunity to do what they do best, challenge themselves, learn something new, and move Bros forward in our 7,000 year mission to produce the most epic face melting tank grinding rock operas imaginable. Here are some highlights. Monsters. The Hexen are walk around puppet monsters on half stilts. With some modifications to previous puppet designs, Bros puppeteers would have the challenge of creating two costumes that could be worn by supporting characters in a full length show. Think Cyberpunk, Bebop, and Rocksteady meets Jim Henson's Creature Shop. <laughs> All right, so often is actually going to be super complex. Multiple costume layers will build up through the show as he slowly turns into an, an infected monster. Phil built us some prototypes. By the finale, the actor's costume will be replaced by a massive floor-to-ceiling puppet that fills half the stage. This would be the biggest puppeteering feat ever accomplished by Bros, or really anyone, let's be honest. Dude, people are going to go fucking ape shit. We want our characters to be wearing... Yes. Yeah. We want our characters to be wearing sound suits, which through the use of LEDs or other yet-to-be-explored technologies, trust me, will show a visual representation of the sounds emitted by the nanobots. Also, sweet space armor for everyone. Uh, movement team, Effervescent Collective in the house, listen up. We want to utilize the movement team to their maximum potential, and honestly, fucking ceiling high on that one. Yeah, um, with at least three big fight scenes and integrated choreography throughout the show. Midpoint Showstopper, fun shit. The main stage will be transformed into a seedy bar scene featuring a space-age burlesque performance, which then brings the band front and center. We imagine giving the bros the opportunity to go wild with new creature designs, cameos of bros celebrities, and generally blowing the audience's mind with alien choreography, that, lighting, fog, costumes, and music. All right, what is the music? We are looking at an industrial post-rock soundtrack with a super heavy, gritty synth undertone. The soundtrack will be informed by a droning sound wave created by the nanobot implants worn by the characters. As the implants become infected, the tone of the droning becomes louder and more haunting. We want the sound of the instruments to be influenced by what is being communicated on stage, creating thematic soundscapes. Oh, and don't worry, JD, there will be plenty of room for epic guitar riffs. <laughs> Regarding this set right here, which I suck at drawing, I'm sorry. Um, it's great. We want to build a moving set, you can't really see all of it here, of double-sided okay. panels which can be turned to change the space and used to hide and expose different areas of the stage. Uh, we would add a small platform between the main stage and the rock deck with ladders going between the different levels. The movement team will move between the levels to create a sense of swarming, adding depth to invasions and battle scenes. We will also incorporate live video into the performance which will be projected on stage. This additional dimension will free up the main stage for crazy intense set changes. Oh, and also this would look fucking epic under Shade lights. I mean, what would, but seriously. Challenges, challenges. This is going to be a massive under, thank you, sir. This is going to be a massive undertaking. The puppets are going to be the most complex bros has ever created. We are asking a lot of our performers who be acting, singing, fighting, dancing, and doing puppetry. Incorporating video is going to be another challenge. This is definitely going to be an all-hands-on-deck show, and we will present at least as many challenges as Valhalla did possibly more. Thank you. All right, guys, give it up for Shannon and Chris. Sabrina, All right, we have another five minutes of Q&A. Anybody? Besides the drinking, who has a question? No one can get a sip of anything because everything is free here. My no space class for anybody. Let's already go. Hey guys, um, you guys are visiting like a super end boss fight with the Florida ceiling puppet. Absolutely. And who would that be between? And I'm just kind of having a hard time following who the protagonists are that form into one big antagonist at the end. Or Hawken, who was highlighted, would be that character who kind of explodes, kind of a uh, Tetsuo moment where he just kind of goes crazy. Um, the people fighting him would be Isla and Vale. They will both be wearing the same armor. The helmet was modeled and prototyped. Um, they will both be wearing the same armor and it will be confusing. You won't know who is who. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, so you guys have a lot of uh, over-the-top, elaborate, uh, really ambitious costumes planned for this, which is really effing awesome. Um, but how do you... Over here. Over here. Hi. Uh, how do you anticipate not losing the human element in in the actors uh, for having these, you know, these costumes that take up half a stage or have very elaborate masks, just not losing the human element to them? There are a lot of characters who do have the human element. Uh, we want a lot of the villains to be kind of 80s, you know, video game style boss fights. Um, but we imagine a lot of the other characters to be human. Um, we are all wearing costumes that are based off of certain characters. Uh, top is Surma, bottom is kind of Akim. Also, we do want to bring in um, mask experts to teach our actors how to act with a helmet on. Because it's not as easy as like, look, I look epic in a helmet. It's like, look, I know how to move my head, I know how to move my body and act with my whole body. Do you, do you see it working without a mask that like actually covers the face, but more like outlines the face? John, where are you? Come back up here with your helmet. What is, what is the takeaway message for the audience coming out of Cybernautica? The takeaway is a strong female character making the ultimate decision we didn't want to go into the entire, entire, entire story. There you go, move your head. Um, but basically in the end, Isla is faced with the decision that she can live a life of comfort with her friends and do all the things that she's never had because she's been a refugee, or she can kind of make the ultimate sacrifice and not turn her back, but leave these people in order to protect them and actually take the information that her mother gave her and cure the nanobot cancer and become uh, a positive force in the world. Anybody else have a question? Chuck? In the back? In the back? Um, we haven't really specifically considered any historical circumstances that would parallel this. We are referencing some Greek tragedy elements, which it felt like too much to get into that with this. Um, but we are following a Greek tragic structure um, to like maybe 85% um, realness on that one. Uh, but no, I mean, honestly, people have uh, Greekness, Greekness. Sorry, guys, I'm not so good on the spot. If people have sort of social things that they are interested in exploring with this, we are totally open to that. Definitely a cool idea. Win? Like breaking wind? <laughs> if you want to build a giant fan, like a fart? Hey, um. AK, hey, you failed me on that one. <laughs> I left it wide open for you now. Hey. Shut up, dirt! <laughs> so, I was wondering if um, there was any inspiration for that helmet design. <laughs> I don't recognize that at all. No. <laughs> Anybody else have questions for these guys? Anybody else? This is the last one. Get it in if you got it. This is it. Last pitch. Anybody? Ask me about dick jokes. Ask me if there's room for dick jokes. Is there room for dick jokes? That's a dick joke. Everybody knows that in Bros there's always room for dick jokes. Okay, thank you so much, guys, for coming to the 2012 second annual Fist Party. There's plenty more beer to drink. There's buggy in the seventh house in the room. We are going to get kicked out at 11 p.m., so party now. Party hard. Don't forget to vote. Please, please, please. That's why we're here. Vote. Use your vote cards.